Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I have a gift box for you and I hope you'll agree it's not just an ordinary gift box, it's this. A gift box in the shape of an arcade game. Inside the arcade game is the gift box. As you can see it's quite roomy and it fits snugly inside. Now this was not my original idea. I found the idea for this from Nicole Silhouette and I'm going to leave a link to her YouTube channel as well as to Tracy Farr's channel whose video tutorial I watched uh, so that I could try my hand at replicating this project. It is available as an SVG file from Nicole her, herself. She has an Etsy store and she also will be making a die for this project. It wasn't without its problems. I admit I made a few mistakes, but I think like any other good crafter, <laughs> I covered it up. And I think I was pretty successful as you'll see in the video. So if you would like to learn how I made this arcade gift box, and if you'd like to give it a try yourself, stick with me. I'll show you how. These are the main pieces for the arcade box. Now I've cut these on my scan and cut, but you can easily just draw them on a um, sheet of paper, trace around them, and make your own design. All you have to keep in mind is that you'll need to measure how far this portion is, this top portion here, as well as any slope here and here. I also did the front as well because I decided to put an aperture in here but you don't even have to do that you don't even have to have an opening there in addition to the side pieces I have a top piece which measures a 5 by 6 the front which is also a 5 by 6 and the bottom part of the um, arcade box which is 5 by 4 there are also reinforced sides which are cut a quarter of an inch uh, wider than the sides. So, you can maybe see, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but there is about an eighth of an inch all the way round that side piece and this is going to reinforce the outside of the arcade box. Now I've already gone ahead and glued these pieces together. You want to cut out anywhere from three to four pieces depending on the density of your cardstock. I had two very high density uh, pieces. They were I think around 350 GSM and then I had the uh, other which was the 200 GSM which matches this weight and I just glued all three of those together. Also got the back piece which measures 5 by 8. So I'm going to do some scoring and I'll start with the back piece. For the back piece, which measures 5 by 8, you want to score at half an inch. And it's easiest just to turn it around and score it again at half an inch. Or you could score it, of course, if you wanted to, at 4 and a half. So that's for the back piece. Just those two sides. For the
Paul went to score at half an inch on all four sides. So I'll just, I'll start there, going round, scoring half an inch on all four sides. And then, with the six inch side, the longest side, at the top of the scoreboard, you now want to score at four and a half, and at five and a half, which is already scored for us, okay. Or you could score that first if you wanted to score the one half, the four and a half, the five and a half, and then score the other sides. So we've got that scored. For the front of the arcade, there is a section which is wider. This is slightly wider than, or it's wider than than the um, the bottom piece here. So. For this, I measured here, and that was one and seven eighths. So, I don't have any score line here, or no tab, that is, at the top. So I'm just going to score at one and seven eighths. All right. Then, I measured from here to here, which will be the next line, and that was two and five eighths. So I want to come down two and five eighths. So we're going to be four and a half inches because we're going to count from our last score line. So one and seven eighths. So there's one, there's two, and there's one, two, three, four. Five. So four and a half. And that's our next score line. And then I had to measure from here to here. And that is seven eighths of an inch. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or leave us with a half inch score line. And you can even double check it by turning it and you see that is right on the half inch score line. Then with the five inch side in the scoreboard, score both of these sides at half an inch. And that's the front. Now for the bottom, you want to have it on the five inch side inside the scoreboard and this is only going to get half an inch scored on either side half an inch on that side and half an inch on that side or as I said before half an inch and four and a half inches and that is the bottom and that is the scoring to go ahead and fold and burnish the score lines and then I'll show you how you cut it and put it together. Now at the moment, I have a furry friend here. You can probably hear her, and she refuses to take no for an answer. So I think uh, we're just going to have to work around her. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put my double sided tape on the tabs, and after I've done that, I'll come back and I'll show you what we're going to do next. I've finished applying the tape to this last piece and I've gone around all the pieces 
with my bone folder just to be sure that all that glue is well and truly stuck there and there are no air bubbles. So the next thing I want to do is to attach the back to the sides and I've marked them already so I've got my left and my right side so they will go like so they're just going to go along these tabs here Next is the front of the box. Okay, so we have the top, we have the front, and we have the bottom. So we're going to place these all together as well. is where these score lines are I'm going to make a wedge here I'll, I'll start here with this one inch score line here and what I want to do is just take a little V out like that so just on either side of that score line there little G because that will help it to bend right and we're going to do that also here so just a little V like so take that out the next is here at the top of this aperture and if you want to know what I went with, I went with about two and three quarters by one and one and three quarters, it looks like one and three quarters, no, one and, yes, yeah, one and three quarters, so, but you could make that any size you wanted to, want to, or you could even just leave it out altogether, so, on that next score line, again, a little wedge or a V, and on here as well. And then I'm going to repeat it on the other side. Go ahead and taper that off as well. Okay, that's going to go onto the back piece. Ah, uh, piece should look something along these lines. Going to bring in the back and sides and start putting the front piece of the arcade box in place. Go to the sides. What I'm going to do is just 
lay it down like that and then match up these sides as we go. At this point, I realize I forgot to cut this wedge here where that 7 8, eight inch mark is. And also, some of my double sided tape had actually come over the edge. It's a little bit wider than the half inch, so do a very good job of that but I think I can fix that in a bit so I'm going to move on to the other side and I may have to do some adjustments I've made some sort of a <laughs> miscalculation here. So I, and Chloe is back. She was across the room, but I think there was enough excitement over there for her. So here she comes. Alright. But the other thing is, I forgot that I have these reinforcement pieces which are actually going to go onto the outside. So that is going to cover up most of that mistake. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just piece across this here just to keep those little bits from showing and give it a little more reinforcement. So I'm just going to take a scrap piece of card. And I'm going to just piece that in place. Not even going to be worried about Just so it fills that little gap there. I'm just going to take the glue. Where there's a will, there's a way, right?
give it a generous amount of glue. Some more cardstock that measures four by eight. Which I'm just going to place on the back just to give it a little more stability. Because it isn't very heavy cardstock to begin with. So this will just give it a little extra strength. Add it. I decided also make a reinforcement piece here for the front as well, for the bottom of the front that is. I'll give this some time to dry now and then I can go on to the box itself. measures three and a half by just under four inches so about a sixteenth of an inch so just a tiny little slither off the side there and I'm also going to use these scrap pieces of card to reinforce it bottom of the box now and for the size I've already cut and scored some of these I have two pieces that are going to go onto the side that's the longer pieces these are the ones that measure just around just under four inches and they are three and a half inches in height with a half an inch tab at the bottom so cut this at four and a half by just under four and those are going to get attached and I've decided to put them on to the, the tabs onto the bottom and then I can cover that as well the other pieces are the shorter ones these are three and a half and just double check the width yes by four and a half and on the four and a half inch side I scored at half an inch so here's my four and a half inch just going to score it at half an inch on either side there and then fold and burnish that symbol the box I've got the bottom piece here and I've got the short sides as well as the long side so I'm going to start by gluing this tab to the bottom of the box and I'm also going to just take a little bit of an angle off of here this doesn't protrude past the edges and I'm going to take my glue and get this into position so you can pretty much feel it up against there. It's at a right angle now so I can flatten it down, go across with my bone folder, flip it over and do the same on the reverse. And there's the first side down. The other side, I'm going to do exactly the same. Angle that. 
I had already finished making the box when I discovered that the battery for my phone had run out. And it's also a good thing because I may have given you some wrong measurements. So I'm going to go back over them for you and I'll tell you how I ended up constructing this. Also, I've reinforced it by just cutting additional pieces from some of my scrap card and just gluing them into the inside of the box. But what it should have been <laughs> was the base is three and a half by four and these sides are four by four and they are scored at half an inch. So show you here. Scored on one end at half an inch so that you can then fold this and place it under that piece. And this is how I glued those together. And I did cut these into little tabs so I took uh, the uh, wedges off there so that should have been four by four scored at one half these sides I believe this is the one I had the wrong size for these should be four and a half by four and on the four and a half inch side score at half an inch on that side, half an inch on the four inch side, and half an inch on the four and a half. So on three sides, you're going to score half an inch, because then you'll see that that will fit where the shorter than this and to make it work on as far as tabs go just you would wedge in here like that and on this side well, so you have something that looked like that and do the same on this side you could if you wanted to just go up the score line first and then take the wedge out but just to Give yourself a little angle cut there because it'll make it a lot easier for it to slide under the base. So those will go in like that. All right. And what I did was when I got ready to actually put it together, and I'll just go ahead and do this one. For you rather quickly so half an inch half an inch and half an inch and on that last piece scored at half an inch okay so what I did cut it into a tab bottom so, and on this one, the same as far as cutting a tab. So, I'm going to cut it out here and here. Just that you make one less cut. You could. Like I said, just go up the score line and then cut the tab, but it's much easier just to do it all in one, in two steps rather than three. So, then these get attached 
with the adhesive or the glue or whatever you're going to use onto the bottom like this and once you've got them all together what I did was I flipped it over and then just do that real quick for you. So, this is my longer piece, and that's going to go under this four inch piece here. And if I just use my scoreboard, I can actually make sure that that is flush. You can feel it actually. And then the shorter side is here. Like so. And then on around. All right. And then what I did was I turned it over. And in fact, what you could have done to make it a little easier is to score your cardstock on both sides. So, score it at half an inch, turn the card over, and score it again. It just makes it easier to bend the card. So, what I did, as I said, was turn it over. So now I have these tabs here. These tabs here on the bottom and I folded them up like so and then attach them to the side. This box is meant to be a snug fit. And as you can see there isn't a whole lot of room to get your fingers in there to pull at it and in fact tugging at it too much could possibly distort the shape. So what I'm going to do is on, I'll just take a pencil and put a little X here. On these two sides, I'm going to take some of this ribbon and I'm going to put a little pull on either side. So I've got my glue gun heating up. And I'm also going to take some of this red liner tape and get it stuck into place. all that done, I'm now going to move on to the decoration of the mats that I'll be using. I've already cut these out and they're cut just slightly smaller than the pieces that they're going to cover. So about an eighth to a quarter of an inch and they'll be placed like so got these side pieces. We also have pieces for the front here and the back and also around the, the uh, game area, the window area here. I might change my mind on that but I also in addition to these, have a few other little bits and pieces which I might consider, and that includes some pieces for the front. 
I've got some little pearls which I could use for knobs and they'll have a sheet of acetate which is going to go behind the window here as well as an image that I'm going to place in the back. All these I got uh, from pixabay.com which is a free for commercial use site that has PNG files on it and I'm going to just put these away for now till I get there and I'm going to go ahead and put this in as well as the acetate so you do glue this inside. Transparency that I'm using, it's actually overhead projector transparency so if you don't have any proper acetate you can do something like this even anything from packaging because this is not intended for construction it's just to give that illusion that there is a Green there. Right. Now, start decorating the outside. I've got all my pieces here, as I said, and I'll start with the top. For the window here, or the screen, I decided just to trim that down and just leave the screen part here. So just going to go around here. where those dots are, these little knobs, and I'm going to put some glue on there as well, even though these do have a sticky back to them, I want them 
to stay in place. to make this a happy birthday box so I'm going to just glue this happy birthday here and I just made that on my Corel draw so it could be changed at any time of course that's not what you wanted. This little sentiment, you're a winner. I'm just going to put it on this bit of card to give it a frame. center it and then that's just going to go here I'm not going to put it on foam I'm just going to do it straight on to the front here so I went through my stash and I found this piece which I've mounted onto the back of the same paper that I used to cover the box and it's this piece here. Here's my corner rounder there. And it will fit just perfectly in there without even having to cut it. Can't believe it. <laughs> I'm going to go with my jelly roll pin here. This is a Sakura white jelly roll pin and I'm just going to hand write some little signs for the side of the arcade game. To place these on either side of the console. decided to also line the inside of our box with some of this matching paper. Alright, I think I'm going to stop there, at least for now, and let's load the little box up with a couple of goodies, some of these wooden stamps hand carved stamps and we just slide our box in like so and we have our little ribbons here which actually we can just tuck them out of the way if we so desire but then we have them also to help us pull out that box put the box back in place and just show you the sides and the back as well as inside the little screen there you can see the game back there we've got the little place for the coins and the buttons to push and our sentiments now, as I said, this was not my idea. I did not come up with this idea. I got this from watching a video by Nicole Silhouette, who has an SVG file for this project in her Etsy shop. Also, she is in the progress of making this into a die as well, so that if you have a die-cutting machine, 
you would be able to make this yourself. And even though this is a undeniably more masculine version, there's nothing that would prevent you from giving this a more feminine touch as well. So, I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly enjoyed making it. It was a nice challenge for myself to see if I could replicate this without having any cutting files or any uh, dies and I think it turned out rather well except for my little mess up here on the sides but we're able to actually hide that with the reinforcement sides so if I made it again I would take a little more time with that and make sure that that was taken care of the box is really secure in there. It does not come out unless you give it a good shake. So anything inside of there is going to be secure. And these are rather heavy, so you can tell that it can handle the weight. Thank you so very much for joining me today for this little project. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please leave me a thumbs up. I would certainly appreciate that. Also, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing that as well. Hit the notification bell, share with your friends, and as always, please stay safe and crafty hugs. Bye!